Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to the channel, Oxet Magic, and it's Jordan here. So, while Digital Armour is slacking off with the wedding duties, we figured we'd jump in and give you all your weekly dose of a Brawl Deck Tech this week. So for those of you who do not know what the new Magic the Gathering Brawl format is all about, please check out the video by Digital Army in the description box below. This week's Brawl's Deck Tech is based off Shana Cisse's Legacy. She is a great value commander for 2 CMC and she's in the Selesnia colours. She also had the added bonus of not being able to be targeted by abilities of your opponent's creatures. Now, she is a 0, zero but she gets plus 1, plus 1 for each creature you control, including herself. So, essentially, what we're going to do with her in a Brawl deck is go as wide a strategy as possible. In our Brawl deck, we have two themes. One is a token strategy theme, and the other is a tribal theme of... That's right, ladies and gentlemen, cats! On our cat creature package, our deck consists of the usual suspects of Regal Caracal, Pride Sovereign, and Metallic Mimic. Caracal is a cat lord and also gives us three bodies and also buffs all out of a cat creatures with a lifelink. Pride Sovereign is a double threat in the fact that one, he gets bigger than more cats that we control and two, he can generate cat tokens so late game he gets fantastic. Metallic Mimic is of course into the battlefield and we name him cats and then any cat that enters the battlefield after the fact is also entering with a plus one plus one counter on him. We're also running Prowling Separate Bard. Sacred Cat, Long Tusk Cub, a Dawn Pouncer, and Watchers of the Dead. Long Tusk Cub as other cat support. Along to boost the cats, we're also using Vanquisher's Banner and Radiant Destiny. Banner is giving us an Anthem effect and card draw for every time we cast a creature spell of the chosen type. Destiny is giving us the same Anthem effect, but also Vigilance if we manage to achieve the City's Blessing, which you can imagine is pretty easy in this deck. Moving on to the token sub theme of the deck. We have Anointed Priest, Ovia Pashiri, and Golden Guardian. Anointed Priest is giving us a life every time a token enters the battlefield under our control. It also has the Embalm mechanic on it, allowing it to come back to the battlefield later in the game. Ovia Pashiri is obviously giving us the benefit of either creating just a 1 1 token, which is fine, or late game we can start getting major value out of her by getting very large tokens. Guardian is a 4-4 defender, which is fantastic, but if we activate its ability for 2 mana and it dies, we get the ability to generate 4-4s as it flips into a land, or we just get a land out of it, so fabulous either way. Moving on, we also have Cultivator of Blades, an Angel Invention, and Oketra the True. Cultivator of Blades is making us either servo tokens or allow us to develop for a big board swing late game by adding plus 1 plus 1 counters on it. Angel of Invention is also acting as a lord by giving plus one plus one across all our creatures. And again, we can either generate servos or just have a big body in the air. Oketra is a nice, great big double striker as a 3 6, uh, providing, of course, that we got at least three other creatures on the board. But worst case scenario, as a mana sink late game, she can just keep generating tokens. Our final bits of token generation we are using is Oketra's Monument, Anointed Procession, and Legion's Landing. Monument is obviously giving us a great cost reduction across our white creatures, and every time we cast a creature, we're going to get a 1 1 Vigilance token. Not bad. Anointed Procession gives us the ability to double all our tokens whenever we create them for 4 mana. Legion's Landing enters the battlefield, we gain a Vampire token, and then we have Attack with 3 creatures. It flips into Adanto the first 4, allowing us to create more Vampire tokens or again ramping us for more white mana. Our final creature of the deck is Shalai, a voice of plenty from Dominaria, which is not only giving us our planeswalkers and our other creatures hexproof, yes, yes, and yes, but also great late game as a mana sink as it can start pumping out plus one counters across all of our creatures. And speaking of planeswalkers, we are running Huatli Radiant Champion and Ajani Unyielding. Huatli, of course, uh, can gain a ton of loyalty counters depending on how many creatures we got. It also has a great pump ability as its minus effect, again allowing us to get through some nice good damage. However, if its ultimate is where the key bit is, because every time a creature enters the battlefield, we can draw a card, which just allows us to uh, gain added bonus of generating all these tokens. Ajani is allowing us to obviously refill our hand or exile an opponent's big threat. Yes, they get a bit of life out of it, but it's not too bad in the long run of things. But if we manage to also get his ultimate off, we can also get very big tokens, ladies and gentlemen. Not to mention, obviously, if we do have Hawatli on the field, we get to give her some more loyalty. So, 
Moving on to the ramp of the deck, we are running Beneath the Sands, Hours of Promise, Gift of Paradise, and Growing Rights of Viflamog. Beneath the Sands and Hours of Promise are pretty straightforward fetches, but with Hours having the upside of searching for any two lands, and if we control three or more of we're going to gain two zombie tokens out of the benefit. Gift of Paradise is obviously ramming us by one, and it also gains us a little bit of life as then into the battlefield. Rights of Ithomog uh, can ramp us very quickly, providing that we have four creatures at the end step, but it also allows us to dig the four cards deep for a creature when it enters the battlefield, and then when it flips we gain mana equal to the amount of creatures that we do have on the field. Our other value spells in the deck are Mirage Mirror, Helm of the Horse, Strength of the Pack, and Ronus' Monument. Mirror allows us to copy either a creature, an enchantment, artifact, or a land, giving us incredible flexibility. Helm of the Host allows us to generate tokens of any creature, especially ignoring the legendary effect. So we can either make more Shanas if we need to, or hell, even more Caracals to get even more token generation off of that. Strength of the Pack obviously boosts the team by giving all our creatures 2 plus 1 plus 1 counters. And Ronus' Monument uh, is also giving us a discount on our green creatures, but we're mainly using it as a pump ability to get plus 2 plus 2 and give trample. So this on a, on a Sashay or on a Pride Sovereign can get in quite a large chunk of damage. Some of the removal in the deck we are using is Plummet, Sandblast, Settle the Wreckage and Cast Out. We also have Fog in the form of Hazer Pollen, and our final spell of the deck itself is Authority of the Consoles, which is of course taxing our opponents and giving us incremental life gain as we go. So moving on to the land package of the deck, we start off with Sun Petal Grove is our jewel of the deck, Ether Hub, Unclaimed Territory and Evolving Wilds are helping fix our mana. Our desert package comes in the form of Hashep Oasis, Shefet Dunes, Scavenger Grounds and Deserts of the True and the Indomitable. And to round things off, we have 7 forests and 6 plains, bringing your total card count to 60, ladies and gentlemen. That is our deck tech of the week. Personally, I've been enjoying brewing this one, and uh, I have been proxy playtesting, and it is rather sweet. Uh, but I want to know, what are you brewing around for the Brawl format? Let me know in the comments below. Also, if you do like the deck, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel. It obviously helps us out. And I have been your host, Jordan, and I'm signing off. Goodbye. Thank <laughs> you.